we're going to do a little MO, and it's actually going to be an MO with a vestibular um, not attached there on that second primary molar, a crown here on that first primary molar, and uh, a distal on that cusp. But you can see the shadow of the decay here. That's probably our biggest cuspid on our biggest cuspid decay on, on all of our uh, quadrants for this kid. So I'm going to go in from the occlusal first, 556 burr, and we are going to go down and get that MO cleaned out first. And the way this guy is um, interesting because his first primary molar that we're going to put the crown on is pretty tipped. It's pretty tipped lingually. So it's a good uh, example of how things are just really never quite uniform. So we have to be able to adapt our instruments and our materials. We get enough bulk of material here so that we don't have fracture. And we want to get down past all of the decalcification, all of the decay. Alright, I'll take a little peek at that with our mirror so I can see down into the box. Pretty nice. And we're going to go here and get our buckle. It's a fairly big buckle. I can see the um, shadow it's going and it's going. Okay, we can even see this radiographically. Okay, now I'm not worried about my first primary molar right now because that's going to be a crown. So whatever parts of that primary molar I take off, or if I go into the distal there, it doesn't matter because that's going to be all cut down for a crown anyway. Okay, I'm going to get the decay out of our buckle here of our prep. So big round burr, those are the best for getting out decay. Big round burr down to some nice solid dentin. I think we're nice and solid where we are. Nice wash and a dry, nice and solid, looking good. Okay, there, there, all good. Uh, so now, <laughs> Okay, I just want to go just a little further down here into that box because I feel like that matrix is not going to go all the way down to the base if I don't. Let's see where we're at here. Looking pretty good. So we're going to take our matrix and we're going to give, uh, I think that might be a little bit too tall, but we're, let's see. Let's give this matrix band a try. So we're going to go down with that matrix band. Oh, we're pretty nice actually up to where the marginal ridge should be. And we're gonna go in with a wedge. So I'm gonna take my orange wedge. Just go in, go in as far as I can. Okay, cause my big deal is I want that gingival margin to be nice and tight. Okay, and that's why I'm putting my matrix on. So this is gonna be our garrison matrix. It's gonna go on here. And we wanna get down on top of that, make sure that you are nice and stable before you move your finger, otherwise you're putting it on a second time. Okay, except I've got a little bit of, maybe a little bit too long here because I need to uncover my buckle. I need to be able to get in there and uh, restore my buckle as well. So I'll just take a look with my mirror, make sure that I'm down all the way. So now if this was an, if this was an MODO, which it's not, um, you know, then I'm more concerned about my, my, uh, my contact. Here I'm not concerned about my contact, I'm concerned about the base of the restoration. So I'm going to etch and I'm going to bond and I'm going to do a modified snowplow technique that we've been doing all case long. So we'll do a nice selective etch there, a little bit more control over this etch. And I want to get the grooves etched too, right? Because I want to get sealant type of material over top of the grooves so that this kid doesn't come back. Oh, so much for control. So, so reality is, now we're gonna be doing a total etch technique on here, which is fine. It's all, it's all gonna work out. If I can have enough control of my etch, but this etch was a little runny. And so, 
it came out faster than I wanted it to. Not a big deal. This is real life. So we're going to have a restoration with our universal bonding agent. Universal bonding agent is going to go everywhere. We're going to put it onto the occlusal here so all those grooves can be sealed into the dentin, down into the box, and into that buckle area. Make sure that your bond is um, brush is small enough that it's going to go where you need it to go. Okay, a little bit of flowable just into the base. And that's our Estalite Topiama to the base of that restoration, about a 10% fill. And now we're going to do our composite over top of it. That's Omnichroma again. Oh, there's something on the edge there. I'll try that again. There, and that's into a composite warmer down the way. See as it's going in, it's really kind of opaque looking. And as we cure this, the shade is going to just blend right in. So in we go with our instrument. And that's going to get it all packed down so we got no voids anywhere. That's the goal. No voids. Voidless. <laughs> okay. A little bit of a round here. Same kind of deal. Just getting all of those adapted and sort of moving up towards the sides of the tooth so that we can get a nice adaptation of our material. Okay, and now my marginal ridge. I need to create my marginal ridge. So just get in there and clean it up. Take a look with my mirror. Just going to go down just a touch. Get a bit better of a contour right up against our band here. Beautiful. And now we'll cure it. And then we're going to put a layer of top coat over top of everything. And that's top coat and then cure it up. Take that off. That's the compositite 3D fusion. Take out our wedge. Got a little bit of flash up here, so let me let me clean that up. Otherwise, our little beam's not going to come out. There we go. And I just think that that's going to be super tight. So I've got my how pliers there and really, really tight. I don't know if you could visualize how tight that was. So if that was a just an mo up against a a regular, you know, regular old MO, that's great. Um, we're cutting the crown, so that contact's going to be compromised. Um, well, not compromised, but that contact's going to be cut when I cut my crown. All right, let's get some flash off with a high speed because that's just a little faster than a hand instrument. All right, let me take a little look at that with my mirror here. I'm looking pretty good. Okay, now we got to get into our distal of our cuspid. So I'm going to make some room. I'm going to cut through here. Take the occlusal off of my first primary molar. That's getting the crown, remember. Okay, do my little bevel on the lingual. Do my little bevel on the buckle. I don't want to cut through onto the distal yet. I don't want any bleeding, but I do need to access that cuspid, and I'm going to get that decay away from here. And then if I've got any bleeding over there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of the wedges back in place at the tissue again. See, that one's a little bit bigger. That one's going in over to my, to my buckle. A little bit bigger than the other side. All right, let's see if this is going to go down. Perfect. Very nice. Okay, that's going to just keep it nice and hemorrhage free. Big round burr. Okay, and I know that I'm on the mesial of my D, but it doesn't matter. I got disc, I got carries on the mesial of my D also. Beautiful. Excellent. So, just want to go a little bit to the buckle here. Cool. Okay, and now let's fill it. All right, let's see if we can have a little bit better control of my etch this time. I'm going to try and extrude it only onto there. There we go. Yeah, don't worry about my D. We're not, we're not worried about bonding there. It's all going to be sliced easily and distally anyway. Good. 
good. A little bit of bond. A little air. A little here. Cool. And a little bit of flowable at the base and to do another modified snowplow type of a technique. A little bit of composite in there. Great. And make sure and try and shape that as best we can because we want to do as little polish as possible. That's the goal for this kid and least amount of time we can take doing a restoration on a wiggly kid. This kid's not wiggly. But least amount of time we can take on a wiggly kid, the better. So we want to try and get things as solid as possible. I'm getting a little bit of crumbs in here. Okay. All right, let's give that a cure and see what that all looks like and then see if we can put a little flow over top. Okay. Excellent. Okay, and cure it again and then we will be ready to cut our crown for this little guy. Okay. I've got a beautiful view here, just a little bit of squareness at the top of my marginal ridge, and I just want to polish that down a tiny bit. Beautiful. That's our size six. That's what we had on side number two, and give it a Big old push. There we go. That's a nice snap. And can we give him a little bit of a rinse there, please? All right. That nice fitting crown filled now with some cement. Let's see if we can repeat that. There we go. And if you remember, when we started this quadrant, that first primary molar, the one I just cemented the crown on, was tipped a little bit lingual and the crown on is tipped a little bit lingual so we've restored him to exactly what we started off with and it could do a little floss super tight and a little floss and again super tight one more push and a big rinse and get all of that glue off and let's just take a little peek with my mirror before we call it. And that's it. We'll take that dam off. 